Lots of very cold skins coming out very, very soon. And it looks like the Valentine's event isn't going to be completely free. For more news like this, stick around for this week's episode of This Week in Identity 5. Welcome back everyone to another episode of This Week in Identity 5. We didn't have anything new last week, so I guess we get straight into what we kind of got last week, although we didn't get a patch. So, as I just said, we didn't get a patch last week, as I mentioned in the previous video. Uh, the next update will be coming on Thursday on the 10th of February. But we did get some stuff that came out on the Monday from last week that coincided with the 1st of February. The new content that we got included the Wishing Lights event, where if you participated in this event, you'd get 10 memory spheres. Hopefully you guys got something cool. We got a daily fireworks show event in Chinatown that ranged from the 31st of January to the 6th of February that would have been two days ago as of the release of this video. So I hope you guys participated in that. I didn't participate in that. I did play some matches on Chinatown, I think, but I didn't really pay attention to if there was anything going on there. We got the red packet event. By you logging in daily, you would get five red packets that you could then send to your friends for them to get, uh, I think, 18 clues per package. So it means it was a nice way of sharing your clues. If you logged in daily, you'd also get 10 firecrackers and five premium fireworks that I believe you could use in the Chinatown event. This is something that you could just do, like there were emotes, but more than that, you could just set up fireworks that would actually look really, really cool. I've seen people taking lots of pictures and uploading them. In the in-game store, we got two different furniture packages. We got the fireworks furniture package that was 3,806 echoes for four A-tier rarity furniture for your room that were based on the Chinese New Year so this includes like firecrackers and stuff like that and there's also a cheaper package that is the Roman candle furniture package that costs 1388 echoes that contains six B tier rarity pieces of furniture. These pieces of furniture are nice but I don't think that they're very impressive I think that they do have some effects and they do change but if you think that they're worth it then it's definitely something that you should go for because I have seen some people have them in their rooms and they're quite nice. Some other B tier furniture is available in the Spyglass store for only 80 Spyglasses each. Of course, these pieces of furniture are not impressive, but if you have got an empty room like me, maybe it's a good idea to put some stuff in there. And if you're thinking about buying any of these packages, then maybe you would want to buy some Echoes. And there is an Echo package offer that's going on right now, where I think there is a big discount on how many Echoes you get for your money. Let's move on and talk about what we can expect from this week's patch and this week in general. One of the first things that we'll be getting is Gravekeeper's birthday on the 13th. Again, they have changed recently the birthday event, so now you don't have to complete the questions to be able to get the points. But it would be quite nice if you guys got the points. I believe if you complete the questions, you do get an extra bonus. I did manage to participate in at least one of the birthdays because my game was working. On the following day, we have another character's day, another character day, we have Barmaid's birthday. So once again, you'll be able to unlock a, uh, I think by now you'll be able to get a portrait frame for her if you've got last year's one and Gravekeeper as well, you'll be able to get a portrait frame for him too. Also, if you remember on the 14th, that is Barmaid's birthday, it is also Valentine's Day and we're getting a Valentine's Day event, although not a magnificent one. By playing some matches on Valentine's Day, you'll be able to unlock Emil's portrait and also his portrait frame. If you want to get Ada's though and her portrait frame that is quite a nice one I must say then you do have to buy it apparently. I'm not sure if it's going to be available for clues or for echoes but it says on the poster you have to buy it not that you unlock it so I'm a little bit surprised at this. I do think this is a barrier of entry. I hope that NetEase changes that or that we have to buy it with maybe minimal spy glasses or minimal clues or something like that because I don't think it's very nice of them to separate those two. I thought they would both be able to be unlocked, maybe for completing different types of events. Along with this event, of course, we're also getting the Rose Cane accessory that is an A tier accessory for Ripper. This one is the one that lets you carry the survivor in your arms, but it doesn't permit you to attack because there is a blue rose cane and there is also a red rose cane. The red rose cane lets you attack and has the same animation and the blue cane does not let you attack. So please be aware that if you play this you are losing a little bit of an ability as a hunter to be able to attack survivors if they get in your way. I can also imagine we'll get some other changes maybe some adjustments to characters but they haven't really announced anything. So let's get into the leak section where we can talk about what we can expect from the future of Identity 5. The first thing that they have announced is well a lot of season 20 stuff. First of all, they've announced the accessories that we should be getting from next season, season 20s, rank essences. This means if you participate in rank matches, you'll be able to possibly unlock 
these things. The first one is an S tier accessory for entomologists called the encased butterfly. I'm sure it'll be very nice and probably change what her bees look like, possibly to a golden color, we don't know, and possibly will also ch change the color of the honey, but I'm also not sure what else they could do, really. They've already done that with the accessory that exists, so maybe it makes it more spectacular. We're also getting an A tier accessory for Sculptor that is called Curio, but it is a weird looking one. Not really sure what it's going to do. It possibly might give the statues a dress. <laughs> and we're also getting an A tier accessory for Enchantress called the Voodoo Dagger. Looks like it might change the, um, the stuns to like a greenish color, but we have yet to see. It is kind of one of the nicest looking ones, I must say. The Season 20's Logic Path skin has been announced and we know who it's for. It is for Axe Boy. And Axe Boy is getting a cool looking snowman slash something, I don't know what to call it, skin where according to his accessory that you'll also be able to get from this event, he is apparently supposed to be a professional skier. But this is a very cool looking skin and I'm really excited to get this, or hopefully if I manage to play the game enough next season. In the logic path we'll be getting a portrait that is Axe Boy's uh, new skin theme. We'll also be getting a portrait frame, his accessory that is like a uh, poster or a canvas of him doing his skiing and also we'll be getting Axe Boy's skin of course that is a very nice one. Some more skins that we're getting in season 20 include season 20 essence one that has been confirmed to be winter sports themed one as I mentioned in the last video there were rumors that it was going to coincide with the winter olympics that are happening in real life and that is true. We're getting an S tier skin for forward that is an impressive one where he looks very 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 cold. He seems to be like maybe a professional racing ice skater or uh, maybe he plays hockey or something, but he wasn't really clear. And we also have an, an A-tier skin for Breaking Wheel that I am so excited about. I've been waiting for another Breaking Wheel skin for a long time. His S-tier is one of my favorites in the whole game. And I've been waiting since he was announced to see what crazy and wacky skins they would give him because he's a very unorthodox looking character. So I really, really want to get this skin. If I don't get it, I'm definitely going to use my ATR unlock card because I have a couple of those. Even though I don't play him, I might need to learn how to play him because he is one of my favorite looking hunters in general. We're also getting an ATR skin for Perfuma that isn't really that uh, impressive in my opinion. Perfuma seems to get a lot of very elegant looking skins, but they kind of all blend together in my mind. Uh, apart from some of the ones that are kind of slightly different where she's kind of looking a little bit more gothic. But the other ones where she's very, very pretty looking, maybe like a dancer or something like that, all blend together in my mind. Maybe that's just me. There haven't been any more rumors, at least of the recording of this video. Nothing else has been announced or even rumored at all. So we'll be moving on to the talk in the manner where I respond to your comments that you left on my recent videos. So let's begin. ADNA69 says everyone wishes for some fair balance changes but this wish will never come true this is in reference for you know the game in general getting some balances but also just talking about maps because recently i've done some videos where you guys voted on which maps are either balanced or not balanced at all i do think it's very very difficult for netties to balance the game right now uh, I do think they need to put way more effort into maybe talking to the community about it. But um, I mean, at least in the case of maps, very, very difficult to balance. You need to see and they need to check their own statistics to see which places are the strongest for kiting and maybe how they can make that a little bit more uh, hunter sided and also see where usually hunters get the most amount of hits and maybe give survivors something ben to benefit from there. If they see that there are very strong kites from very high tiers for a very long time, maybe they need to adjust some areas. I don't really know how you balance a map per se. Aiden Kehimitswe says there are no hunter sided maps. That is technically true according to you guys. All of the maps were below 25% of votes. So None of the maps were actually considered to be hunter sided and none of the maps even came anywhere near approaching the other percentages. It is kind of sad to see that no map is considered to be hunter sided and even the highest ones don't even get anywhere near as close to being anywhere near as uh, survivor sided as the maps are considered to be. But it's also a good thing as well because, you know, if it's neither survivor sided or neither hunter sided, then it's balanced and that's what we want. But I do think that they could also adjust some of those maps that some people think are a little bit hunter sided to kind of see where the problems are there and maybe just get rid of it being survivor sided and hunter sided at all and make the maps as balanced as possible. That I do think is impossible to do. Violet Blue Cur 
says, instead of spending real money on IDV's cool looking pixels, I have chosen to simply spend money on IDV's plushies instead. So this is in reference to my recent shorts video where we were talking about how expensive the SS tier skin was and why it is so expensive. Oh, I pronounced your name wrong, sorry. Not Violet, but Viet Blue I think you're investing your money in a good place. I do think having some physical products is a good idea, but I am not against digital products. I do think that Netties is definitely trying to abuse how much money we spend on their content though because they do notice that we're spending tons and tons of money but they aren't giving us much in return realistically. I would be careful as I don't, I don't really know what Identity 5 stats right now are but I don't think spending tons of money on the game is the smartest move right now as I do think the game is declining at least in our server. So do remember that it's not an NFT, you technically don't own the product, only Identity 5 owns the product because they can take the game off of the uh, Play Store and off of the App Store and you'd never be able to get your skins back again. Which skin are you most excited for from the new season, season 20, Essence 1? Tell me down in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you want to get more Identity 5 content and also asymmetrical game content every single week. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.